What makes a car really fun to drive? Is it the engine? Is it the suspension? The chassis? The transmission? The truth is, it's like all of them. Like baking a cake, it takes a good mix of key ingredients. You gotta have your sugar, gotta have your milk, gotta have your butter, gotta have a couple eggs in there, gotta have your flour, gotta have your baking powder, gotta have some splash of vanilla extract. I'm friggin' Cake Boss over here. You guys ready for a Jerry cake? Get ready. But you guys, you get the picture, right? You need a good balance, otherwise the cake won't rise and just like a cake you can't rely on one aspect of the car too much otherwise it all gets thrown out of balance and an excellent and i mean excellent example of this is the volkswagen golf gti but the real heroes are an electronic limited slip differential the seven speed dsg dual clutch transmission and the dynamic chassis control system Join me as we go bumper to bumper to properly explain why the Golf GTI is one of the best, most fun cars ever made. Let's go. Well, all right, all right, all right. Big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring today's episode of Bumper to Bumper. I know y'all see me as a credible actor, gracious Southern gentleman, and I sometimes Play naked bongo, <laughs> all right. Well, during my third philosophical awakening in an ambiguous desert, I met a balding man, and he taught me how to become an Oscar-winning actor and generally a pretty awesome dude. Then he asked me what I had to offer. I looked around and I said, hey man, you try keep yet? You might not look like Mr. Clean. I told him I could tell he was one of the two out of three guys that was predestined to experience some sort of male pattern baldness by the time he hit 35. He told me stories of his flowing locks of love, how they failed him, and how they affected his ability to guide celebrities like myself on spiritual awakening. I was able to set him up with an online doctor's appointment so he didn't bear the brunt of visiting a doc's office with that peach fuzz head. <laughs> now his hair loss medication goes directly to his door every three months. Now when you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash b2b or click the link in the description to receive 50 percent off that's half off if you know math that's k e e p s dot com slash b to b <laughs> all right all right let's get back to the episode now i introduce you mr alex and this is his front wheel drive car he's in a parking lot he's got his hands off the wheel and he puts the pedal to the floor and you can see the wheels in his front wheel drive car shift they go one direction and that's because it's experiencing torque steer so what causes all this well it's a couple different things going on but it all leads back to the transversely mounted engine in the front of the car now see in a rear wheel drive car there's a drive shaft that sends the power to the rear of the car and the differential transfers that power to equal length half shafts that go to each rear wheel but in a front wheel drive car, there is no drive shaft. Instead, the engine, the transmission, and the differential have to share the space of that engine bay. And that leads to half shafts of unequal length connected to each of the front wheels. And this unequal length leads to a different level of reaction to the torque from the engine, which leads to different levels of grip from each wheel, and therefore leads to unpredictable veering, also known as torque steer. You guys got it. And the part where the GTI is special is how it puts that power down effectively. And that, my friends, is accomplished using its VAQ limited slip differential lock. Also, it's important to note that this is the first front wheel drive car to ever be offered with a differential lock. That's pretty crazy. If you think of all the front wheel drive cars out there, this is the first one ever made to have a locking diff. Thank you, Germany. What is a differential? Well, that is the part of the drivetrain that transfers the engine's power to the wheels. And the differential also allows the wheels to turn at different speeds, giving the car the ability to make tighter turns. Now, if you watch the high-low episode where Nolan welded his diff in low car, you notice how it couldn't do a reasonable U-turn after they did that. And that is because he intentionally stopped the differential from doing what it was originally designed and engineered to do. Now, before we play this clip, pay close attention to the wheels on low car. You can hear them dragging when he turns, and that's because one wheel can't turn at a different speed than the other wheel. You know, if you're turning on the inside, that inside wheel's gotta go slower, and the outside wheel's gotta go faster. But when you weld the diff together, they're rotating at the same speed. And if you try to do that when you're going in a circle, you know, doesn't work that way. 
yeah, there it goes. Now moving on, what does VAQ mean? Now that is an abbreviation for another German word, more specifically, this one. And this word in German is Vorderark Square Spear. Nailed it. Now to my English buddies, that translates to front axle crossbar. Okay, great. Now we know how to say it in German and English, but how does it work? Well, on the passenger side of the transmission is the VAQ module, and that's connected to the differential through a drive shaft and a hydraulic pump. And when you're driving the GTI, the VAQ system will decide whether or not to lock the differential by activating the hydraulic pump, sending fluid into the clutch pack to lock it. Now the differential lock isn't an only on or only off type of situation. It's constantly being changed based on the needs of the vehicle. So the diff can be disengaged to fully engaged and back to disengaged again inside of three tenths of a second. Now where this proves to be very helpful is shown through a feature called yaw control. And that's a form of torque vectoring. Torque vectoring is the act of the differential varying the amount of torque being sent to each wheel to maximize grip. And yaw, by the way, is the twisting motion the car experiences on a vertical axis. Let's say you're driving the GTI on a track and you're turning a corner. Mid-corner, VAQ systems will read multiple sensors, including the traction control module and the ABS sensors, and then it will turn on the electronic hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump rapidly builds pressure and stops the differential's ability to send equal power to the wheels experiencing less load. And usually, this is the inside wheel. So therefore, more power and torque is sent to the outside wheel, pushing the GTI around the corner more effectively. Now VAQ also uses a preemptive diff lock system for launching off the line as quickly as possible, as well as neutralizing that pesky torque steer that front wheel drive cars can be plagued by. So it is safe to say that the VAQ limited slip differential is a pretty key piece to applying the GTI's power down to the road properly. However, a locking LSD is not the only thing necessary to transfer power from the engine to the wheels effectively. You also need pretty nifty transmission. The so-called driving purist might say that you can only achieve a pure driving experience with a manual transmission, which the GTI can be optioned with, but the GTI also has an optional seven speed DSG dual clutch automated manual transmission. Now, let me tell you, this transmission is sublime. I'm gonna shift from two to three. I'm gonna shift from three to four. If I had a couple more gears, then I'd shift some more. Now you may ask, why is that the case? Well, look at it this way. A single clutch manual transmission requires the car to engage the clutch, switch gears, and get back on the gas. Now you could be a really, really great driver and you could shift as fast as possible, but there is still that tiny, little, itsy bitsy, very small space. You see it right there? That's, I'm equating this distance into space. There's that tiny space where you aren't on the gas because you need to shift. But a dual clutch transmission, it solves that tiny bit of time it takes for you to lay off the gas. Now dual clutch has two clutches, one outer clutch and one inner clutch. So one clutch will handle first, third, fifth, and seventh, while the other will handle second, fourth, and sixth. Now imagine that the GTI is moving along in first gear and it's about to shift. So as soon as you hit the shift paddle, the GTI uses a synchronizer system to engage the other clutch that is already in place and engaging the next gear at the exact same time the other clutch is being disengaged. But you might be thinking, hey, Jerry, what if I want to downshift? Well, there's an actuated shift fork that decides whether or not the car will be downshifting or upshifting. And this all means that there's not going to be any delay when you shift between gears. And in fact, the shift speeds are so fast that a human couldn't possibly do it. The average human blinks at a speed of 400 milliseconds. A Ferrari Enzo upshifts using a sequential manual transmission in 150 milliseconds. The GTI DSG's transmission, it upshifts in eight milliseconds. Yeah, you heard that correctly, 
eight. That's the number of kids I'm gonna have. Now this family friendly hatchback can shift gears 18.75 times faster than the Ferrari Enzo and 50 times faster than you can blink your eyes. If you don't think that's fast, you're on the wrong side of history, Grandpa. Now the icing on the GTI's cake is its adaptable suspension. Now structurally, it has a pretty standard but fierce and strut setup in the front, which you'd find in most Volkswagens. And in the rear, you'll find a multi-link independent suspension setup. And like the name implies, the movement of one wheel won't affect the grip or traction of the other. Hence, they are acting independently. Meaning the GTI won't get as unsettled as often when driving over uneven surfaces. So on paper, this is great to see. And at the same time, however, all of that stuff is solid and proven technology seen in many other cars out on the road. So what did VW do that's unique? They decided to add some special sauce to it. And that special sauce is dynamic chassis control, also known as DCC. It's an adaptive chassis control, allowing it to improve the suspension's performance in real time. Now using wheel and acceleration sensors, the GTI analyzes the road surface, the speed of the car, and the amount of lateral G-forces the car is experiencing. And with this constant stream of information, the GTI can actively control the damper valves, allowing the car to selectively choose the ideal damping force for each of the four wheels within milliseconds. You guys know how fast milliseconds are? We already talked about it. In other words, DCC allows this suspension setup to realize its full potential. Not only will the car actively manage the damping on its own, the driver can change between several driving modes to fully customize their driving experience. So whether you'd like stiffened dampers in sport mode, all the way to the least aggressive setting in comfort, the suspension will constantly adjust the dampers individually according to the mode that you're in. So you can see the Golf GTI is similar to the cake that we talked about at the beginning of this. I'm sure you remember that cake. You've, you've been drooling the whole time thinking about that sucker. It takes a bunch of ingredients, right? It takes adaptive suspension, it takes a DSG dual clutch transmission, and it takes a VAQ limited slip differential. You put them all together and they make one of the most fun cars to drive ever. And aesthetically, it's a very mature and restrained design that won't turn too many heads. Okay, you're not gonna find huge fender flares or massive wings here, but in their place are subtle red line accents in the grill and on the sides and in the interior. Now, whether this is your first video you've seen on Donut or your 1,000th, we appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. We love you guys so much. Thank you for watching all our videos. Thank you for sticking with us in these, these tough times. Follow us on Donut at Donut Media. We'll be back next week with another Brumper to Brumper. Bye for now.